Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, this is Pastor Keenan Knox. And again, we're here at Impact Church for another iChurch experience. Listen, do me a favor. If you're new, type the word new in the chat or click the link that's available. Also, our intercessors are always in our chat live to pray with you if you have any prayer concerns. But if you want to be discreet, click on the link in the chat and you can fill out a prayer card. Last but not least, we want you to be empowered in the Sunday service. It's going to be big. It's the first Sunday, so grab your bread, grab your crackers, your wafers, grab your juice, your water, whatever you need to grab, go get it. So when we get into our communion part of the service, you can participate in it. Before we get started, let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for today, God. We ask you to bless these, your people. Let us be prepared to lift our hearts in worship and our voices in praise. And God, let the word of God that goes forth today, let it penetrate our very souls that it will provide us with fresh results to take us to our next level, our next season, and our next victory. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you guys on of Praise Worship.
Jesus, Jesus. Say when I cry your name. Come on, right there in your rooms. Right there in your living rooms. Lift up the name Jesus. Lift up the name Jesus. He's above all of your circumstance. He's above all of your issues. In your rooms, right there wherever you are, I dare you just to begin to open your mouth. Come on, take the next few moments right there in the presence of God and begin to lift up your worship to him. Come on, God is responding to your broken worship. Even if you feel like he's not worthy enough to be in his presence, God said, yes, you are. I want you as you are. I want you right where you are. Come on, right there. Open your mouth and set an atmosphere right there in your homes. Come on, right there in your rooms, right there in your car. Wherever you are, lift up the name of Jesus. We glorify you. Come on, for the next few moments, come on, open your mouth. We want to lift you up. Cause you're worthy of the glory We lift you high We lift you high Holy Spirit We lift you high, Lord yeah. Cause there is nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. Cause you're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Yeah. Cause I tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my chain is undone. Yeah, your presence, Lord. Oh, What? 
Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing like it. Nothing in the earth can satisfy the way your Man, praise and worship again. Awesome, guys. It's the first Sunday. It's something about that first Sunday that gets us inspired to take it to the next level. I want to jump into the Word of God, but you know what we got to do? Let's make our declaration. Say it with me. This is my Bible, my weapon of choice. And my heart is locked, and my spirit is loaded. It makes me a living, breathing, walking, talking, anointed weapon of mass destruction. I will overcome every obstacle. I shall see it every opportunity. I will walk in purpose and arrive in destiny. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, glory to God. We're going to jump into 2 Chronicles chapter number 20 in the Amplified Version. And the Word of God declares, Now it happened after this that the Moabites and the Amorites together with some of the Meunites came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Then it was reported to Jehoshaphat, A great multitude has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea out of Aram, Syria, and behold, they are in Hazazon, Tamar, that is in Gedi. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set himself determinedly as his vital need to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So the people of Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord, bringing for him with all, or longing for him with all their heart. Man, I'm gonna spend a couple of weeks in this particular chapter because I really want us to get on the other side of this dilemma. And many of us, we're getting ready to walk into the final quarter of 2020. It is the first Sunday in October. It is the final quarter, and it is the chance for us to turn everything around. So when we see King Jehoshaphat, he says that there are so, much, uh, so many things coming at him and coming at this people that he had to call a fast. But I like some of the words that it says in the scripture. One of the things that left out of me when I was reading it was not just enemies coming from all around, but there were some enemies coming from beyond the Dead Sea. Man, that really spoke to me because oftentimes in our lives, we are faced with things that we thought had died. Some things come back at us, some things we try to resurrect and come into our lives, people from our past, issues from our past, bad decisions. And if that's you, can you just type in the chat, it's me. If that's you, if you've ever felt like you're finally getting over this hump, but all of a sudden something from your past is trying to raise its head against you and trying to remind you of either who you used to be, what you used to do, who you used to be around, and try to pull you backwards as you're trying to move forward. Yes, this year has been perplexing in so many ways. So many things have come at us and, and a desire to take us down. The enemy wants to take you down. He wants to cause you to lose it all. But I praise God that he is our help in the time of storm. I praise God that as I begin to read that scripture, yes, the first thing I see is the attacks. And oftentimes, that's the thing that we wake up to. That's the thing that, that we are bombarded with all the time are the things that are trying to attack us, the things that are trying to take us out. And I'm quite sure if you had a chance to try to list everything that's been attacking you, when you wake up in the morning, you just start thinking about the bills that you have and how underwater you are with your bills or the challenges that you're having homeschooling your kids and trying to get them to study and, and learning new math again and relearning different things. I saw somebody posted about doing social studies with their, with their child, trying to figure out how to really navigate that because they haven't done it since they were kids. So it's so much that's happening in our lives and it's so much that we're dealing with that it can overwhelm you if, if you don't have a plan. And that's a lot of us. We are dealing with the trouble from our past because we don't have a plan for our future. I'm gonna say that again. Many of us are dealing with troubles from our past because we don't have a plan for our future. Now, can me you just talk? Can we talk? Listen, I know if you're like me, 
that you, are, that you have struggled through trying to break free from what's behind you. But as Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind us and reaching those things which are in front of us. But God gives us a plan in this particular scripture. He lets us know that if we're going to really go to the next level, then we need to sacrifice at the next level. We need to know how to fast and pray. I'm reminded of, of a father who, who his son was possessed and he was suicidal, throwing himself in fire and, in, and trying to drown himself and trying to hurt himself. And he brings him to the disciples and the disciples couldn't help him. And then he comes to Jesus and said, Jesus, I, I really tried to, to get my son the help that he needed, but I took him to people who said they had power and they couldn't do anything for him. Maybe that's some of you that you felt like you, you brought your problem to somebody who was supposed to help you and they couldn't do anything for you. But Jesus tells him, he says, listen, he, he, he says, bring him to me. Bring the boy to me. And then Jesus cast that demon out. And then he turns to his disciples. And the disciple says, Master, why couldn't we do it? He said, ye of little faith, some things only come out through prayer and fasting. Not through your position or your or or you're telling people that you know me. <laughs> Cuz we we like to drop names. And people like to drop names. They like to act as though they're important. But that's a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Jesus says some things will only come out through prayer and fasting. Well, prayer connects our hearts to God. Fasting gets our flesh up under subjugation. It brings our flesh up under subject to us. We have to learn how to, how to deal with our flesh because fasting helps you push away your cravings and helps you focus on him and pray to him and be focused on what he is saying, what he is doing. And so Jehoshaphat says, listen, if this is going to change, if we're going to change the situation, the only way it's going to change is if I call a fast. And God disturbed me last week, Sunday morning, and said it's time to call a fast. So we're calling it October fast. We're going to take this time in October to fast and pray and seek God's face because I believe that you're in a desperate situation and in a desperate frame of mind that you're believing God for something big, but it can't happen by flesh alone. It can't happen. Flesh and blood can't do this for you. You need the power of God to, to manifest in your life and you need a deeper connection. And, and if you need a deeper connection, can you just type go deeper in the chat? Because it's time for us to really go deeper in our relationship with God. It's time for us to really get our prayer life together. I mean really pray. So when we talk about praying at 3, 6, 9, and 12, every three hours praying, what is that doing? It is building us up because really, to be honest with you, if, if I took our spirit man to the doctor and he looked at our spirit man, all of us would be flabby, out of shape, high cholesterol, just, you just name it. Our spirit man is, isn't strong anymore. Why? Because we're not working them out. We're not putting our spirit man to the test. We're not putting our faith to the test. We're not praying like we ought to. We're not spending time in prayer. We, we look at prayer as a chore, not a choice. We look at prayer as something we have to get to or get through, not something we get to get to. See what I'm saying? We have to get to the place where we're praying and seeking God's face for fresh revelation and fresh ideas and fresh motivation and encouragement so that when we go to God in prayer, it's not just gimme, 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 gimme. It's not treating God like he's Santa Claus, but it's really connecting with the heart of God so God can help us to move, move closer to him so we can hear clearer from him. That was so good. We need to learn how to move closer to God so we can hear clearer from God. So prayer, taking the time to pray, and I know it's not sexy, I know it's not something that you want to hear right now, but maybe it's something you need to hear. Maybe no one has challenged you to tell you that your prayer life is flabby, that your prayer life is out of shape, that your prayer life doesn't have endurance. And it's not because you, you can't have enough faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I'm inspiring you with the word of God. I'm feeding you with the word of God. But if only thing that you do when you hear the word of God is just share on Facebook and maybe quote a scripture, but you don't take that 
to, that faith and build yourself up to pray and seek the face of God and say, God, if I humble myself and turn from my wicked ways and seek your face, then I know you'll hear me from heaven. Then you'll forgive my sins and then you'll heal my land. I need healing, but it first begins with prayer. If I'm not praying, God's not healing. Yes. It's time to pray. Type that in the chat. It's time to pray. It's time to push back everything I'm feeling and get out of my feelings and get into my faith. Get out of how, how I'm feeling down or depressed. And yeah, that's just a current situation, but you can't change your current situation without future faith. Praying to God, God, how do I get out of this? How do I move forward? How do I intensify and bring the heat up? How do I change my situation? It's through, fair, it's through prayer and fasting. Not prayer or fasting. Prayer, it, it reestablishes the connection, our horizontal with God, our vertical with God, reestablishes the vertical with God. Now, fasting comes in because what fasting does, fasting causes us to deny our flesh. Sacrificing causes us to deny our flesh and our fleshly desires to push that and to get that up under subject, to make that subject to us, to bring our spirit over our flesh so that as we, as we decrease, he increases. As we begin to fast and seek God's face and say, God, listen, in the time that I would stop at Starbucks and grab me a, a latte, I'm going to take that time and I'm going to pray. In the time when I normally would binge watch this TV show, I'm going to put my, my TV, my remote control up, put my tablet up, my phone up, and I'm going to pray. Because if I don't push that stuff away, it's going to get my time. It's going to gather my time. and It's going to make me distracted and unfocused, and I won't be able to seize every opportunity. I have you declare that for a reason, because God provides us with opportunities, but if we're not strong enough or discerning enough to seize it, it'll pass by us. And how many of us have been victims of things passing by us. We all have. You're not in this by yourself. God is going to do the amazing in you, but you have to be willing to go for it. You have to be willing to go for it. Jehoshaphat, the king, the leader, he calls this fast because he says, we need your help, God. We need your help. I believe in this time of prayer and fasting as we begin to seek God's face and begin to ask God these 30 days that we're surrendering to you or some of you are just coming on board today, no matter how many days, it's, it's no magic number. It is just your faith pushing forward. They prayed. They sought the face of God. They believed God for, for something different because they felt outnumbered, they felt out of whack, they felt under-resourced, and they knew that the only way they could turn this thing around, they felt behind, the only way they could turn this thing around was in their, third, in their fourth quarter, in their final quarter, to turn around, they prayed, and they fasted, they began to decree, began to declare. If you look in that, in that following verse, Jehoshaphat begins to pray to God, telling him who God is. He, he, he says, God, I'm just letting you know I didn't forget who you are. I know what you did for us. I know what you did for my ancestors. I know what you did. I know how you brought Israel out. I know what you did, God. I know that you don't forsake your kids. I know, God. That's why we built this sanctuary. We built this sanctuary because, God, we're establishing our covenant here with you, and we're establishing a place of worship here with you. It's like what, when Abraham would build an altar and call it Jehovah Jireh. He built an altar to establish God's domain, God's dominion in the earth through, through the work of God's hands. So when God begins to do the work for you, when God begins to establish his power in you, you're going to see results. You're going to see God manifest some things. So I believe right now we're coming to a place where we got to turn it around. We do. Guys, we got to turn it around. And it's only going to come out. Some things are only going to come out. You're only going to drive out that depression through prayer and fasting. You're only going to drive out poverty through prayer and fasting. You're only going to, we're only going to drive out this disease through prayer and fasting, seeking God's face, believing God for miracles, signs, and wonders. So, I got three words for you. Are you ready? Are you ready for God to move on your behalf like never before? I've always said this, the way up is down. You have to learn how to humble yourself. You have to come to a place of humility and really believe God is going to do the amazing. But I have to be willing to do the sacrifice. 
I have to sacrifice my time, my talent, my treasure to God. I have to say, God, this is the season where I'm believing you for bigger and better and broader. This is going to be an outstanding October. This is going to be a, a, a tremendous turnaround season for us because we are acknowledging you first. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I believe that through fasting, God's going to give you direction. Some of you have been waiting on direction for, for what contracts to, to sign and what deals to make and what people to connect with. And God's going to give you direction because this fast is going to set you up to hear clearer from God, to move firmer in your purpose, to begin to take down every obstacle that is in your pathway and walk into your next season, your next level. Step up to your next level and, 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 and grab hold of your next victory. Yes, I'm excited, man. I brought the service up to the balcony because we're going to the next level. I want you to know that the reason why I'm up here is to remind you that you don't have to be down on the ground anymore. God is, is about to elevate you in this season. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you. Father God, I thank you for our brothers and sisters that are watching from all over the world. I praise your name, God, as we prepare to pray and fast like never before, to sacrifice and to push toward you, to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, to begin to push back our plates and push forward our praise towards you, God, as we begin to lift up your name, God, to decree and declare who you are, God. We know that what you will do is exceeding abundantly beyond our imagination to bring us to our next wealthy place, our next place of healing, our next place of deliverance. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, guys, I want to ask you this question. If you don't know Jesus for yourself, I'm going to introduce him to you. Just do me a favor. Repeat this simple prayer. Dear Lord, I've sinned. I've missed the mark. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. As I receive Jesus, he receives me. Because I confessed it and I believe it. I am saved. You just got saved. Praise God. We thank God for you. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing in your life. But now it's time for us to band together and do something together. And guess what we're going to do together? We're going to worship God in our giving. I am so honored that we have partners all over the world that sow into this ministry and give towards what we're doing in this community. But also giving is the beginning of receiving. Give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So it is a partnership with God that if we do our part, God will do his part. If we give our tithes, God will open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing, a singular blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. How many want to back up a semi truck and say, God, fill it up? <laughs> I know I do. In order to do that, there are several ways we can give. One, we can give by texting to give to the number that's provided. Two, we can give by utilizing the iChurch Anywhere app. Three, we can give through Giblify. We can give a cash app, dollar sign iChurch Detroit. We can give paypal.me forward slash iChurch Detroit. However you choose to give, we'll receive that offering. I praise God for you. I want to bless that offering and then we get right into our community. Father God, I thank you right now for the seed, the sower, the gift of the giver. I ask you to multiply some 30, some 60, some 100 fold according to our faith. Be it unto us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. We get ready to have our communion. Excited about this, man. You know, I often talk about communion being a time that we gather together as a people. But speaking of a gathering, big news. Next Sunday, at 11.01 a.m. We will be on the campus of Impact Church. Yes, we're coming back home for one Sunday to gather outside. We're going to do an outdoor iChurch experience, and you're invited. If you're comfortable, you can sit in your car. We're going to have a transmitter to be able to transmit it into your radio so you can enjoy the service with us. 
we're going to make sure we provide more information on all of our social media channels so that you know just how to connect with us. But show up 1101 a.m. You don't have to get out of your car. You don't have to touch anybody. We're going to be socially distanced. We're going to be in our own cars, but we're going to have praise and worship outside. We're going to have a stage. We're going to have service. It's going to be amazing. So will you join us for that? Amen. Glory to God. All right. Well, before uh, Jesus was betrayed, he had supper with his disciples. And he took bread and he took wine and he said, this, he said, these are symbols of what I'm about to do. And he shared those symbols with them. But before they took it, the Bible clearly instructs us to pray so that we won't take this unworthily. So we're going to pray over this communion. Father God, we pray for this bread and this wine that it will be transformed from its carnal use to that of a spiritual celebration of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. He took the bread, he broke the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat it, you show forth my death and suffering until I come again. As we eat it together, know that we are the body of Christ. We are connected one to another, heart to heart, and hand to hand. In like manner, he took wine, he poured it, he said, this is the blood of my New Testament. And we have to understand what that means. And the Old Testament was about law, the New Testament was about grace. As we drink this um, communion wine, it represents the grace that is poured, not just poured out over us, but poured into us. It's poured into our lives, that favor of God that changes our trajectory and moves us closer to our destiny. As often as we drink it, we shall pour the death and suffer until we come again. Let us drink. Praise God. All right. Well, let's get ready to pray. Father God, I thank you for those who came and joined today, those who connected with you, and those, God, who took Last Supper with us, God. I ask, God, that you bless us as we leave uh, from virtual church and go about our days. I thank you, God, for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, guys, I love you. Feel free to join us this week. You know, Monday night, since we're in prayer and fasting time, at 6.30, the war room is going to be on fire. On Tuesdays, 5.30 p.m., we got the recap. Join us for the recap. Amen. Um, this month, we're going to be doing something a little different, so uh, I'm going to be changing how I do Power Burst, so be able to look out for that. We'll let you know on social media. But next Sunday morning, 11.01 a.m. only, our outside iChurch experience, our drive-up iChurch experience. Are you excited? If you're excited, type, I'm excited, in the chat and share this with everyone. I'll be going off stage to do the live uh, uh, chat with you guys immediately following service. God bless you. I love you. And let's live to Impact. Impact Church will be streaming services Sunday morning at 1101. Just log on for the full worship experience, the preached word, even children's church. You can follow us on YouTube or Facebook Live at iChurch Detroit.